Now let's look at a few examples where these techniques are useful. First, let's look at a scratch detection and avoidance shot. So in this case, with the cue ball at this position, we saw that a rolling cue ball would hit here. But if this cut angle were less, if the hit were more full, if we check our peace sign technique, we see that a rolling cue ball heading this way would deflect pretty much exactly at that corner pocket. So here, from this shot, I'd be worried about a scratch. Let's see where the shot comes up first. So I did scratch. Alright, so let's say we had that same shot. What can we do to avoid the scratch? We already know from this useful reference that a rolling cue ball with slow speed scratches. One thing we could do is use more speed. More speed would have it travel down a tangent line longer before the curve takes. We'd hit a little bit short of the pocket. We could also make sure the cue ball doesn't have complete roll at contact. We can use more speed and a slightly lower hit on the cue ball and have it stun slightly or only have partial roll and the cue ball would head somewhere in between the tangent line and the roll direction. First I'll try slightly more speed to show that curve delay. Alright, so the curve wasn't delayed very much, but it was enough to have us hit this left corner of the pocket. If we still wanted to get up table but didn't want to use extra speed, we could just make sure the cue ball has a little bit less than forward roll. So I might use a little bit more speed and a slightly lower hit on the cue ball. And we can come up over here somewhere. No problem. Here's another example. I'm back to my original cue ball position and I'm shooting stripes. Uh, this cluster over here is trouble. Neither ball goes in any pocket. So I want to break up that cluster. And I still have my reference lines marked. So this, again, this was a stun shot. This was my slow third degree roll shot. So to break up this cluster with a medium speed, I have to be somewhere between stun and forward roll. And since I'm using medium speed, the speed will have it persist along the tangent line a little bit longer. So I might touch the right side of this 11 if I use the medium speed roll shot. But if I want to hit the left side of the 11 to keep the cue ball on the side of the table, I probably want to have a little bit less than roll, all right, to be closer to the stun. All right, so I'm going to hit the shot, medium speed, close to center ball, so it doesn't have full roll at contact. Now it was off slightly, I hit a little bit to the right of what I wanted, but I did break up the cluster. All right, that first shot came up a little short, the cue ball didn't have enough forward roll. So I need to hit the cue ball a little bit higher this time. I'm trying to use the same speed. Well, it wasn't perfect, but you get the idea. Here's another example where the cue ball reference lines can be useful. I don't have a great shot at this two ball. We're playing nine ball. I could try to bank it, I could try a really thin cut, but I don't like those alternatives. But here, it's a great opportunity to, to win the game. We could try a carom shot and pocket the nine. So the first thing I would check is my third degree direction. And I see that it heads well short of the nine ball. So we can't use a rolling ball carom. Alright, so a good alternative is to use a tangent line carom, using the nine degree rule. So if I send a two ball in this direction, the cue ball will head perpendicular and pocket that nine ball. So I need to hit a stop shot with this aiming line. And we just won the game.